What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, to the show. Uh, welcome to the Making It podcast with Brady Martin. Today we're here with Stephanie Potter. Is that what you're? You know, that's that's my Zoom name, but it's Stephanie Summers. Okay, so we're here with Stephanie Summers. Uh, you can follow her on Instagram at Stephanie Summers. You might have already seen her. She actually just hit one million followers this week, which is crazy well i guess when this episode comes out it'll be three weeks ago but still it's huge it's huge so uh yeah how are you i'm fucking fantastic i mean you just said it yourself i hit one million that's something that i have been working towards for a very long time and so my goal this year 2022 i was like you know what okay i gotta set some goals my first one is going to be really dedicate time to Instagram growth, all that, my whole audience building, connecting, all that. And I said, I want to, I want to hit it by or around my birthday. And I hit it two days before my birthday. So I feel good. That's crazy. Yeah. That is so many people. Yeah. It's a lot of people. A lot of eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. And to continue growing. Cause I feel like there's like a churn that you have to get past. Like, do you know how many you lose and how many you gain? It's, yeah, it's a lot. So like, I think I looked like last week and it's like, okay, I gained, I don't know, 15,000 this week, but I lost 4,000 or around there. So it's, it's a good chunk to where it's like, wait, what the hell? Why'd you follow me? But then you'll be like, nah, never mind. Did you get a girlfriend or something real quick? Like what happened? Uh, so I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is or why, but, but it's, yeah, it's like, yeah, I gained, but then, oh, dang it. Okay, two steps forward and then one step back. That's not, that's not too bad, so. Yeah, that, I mean, still, like you get my whole following in a week, which is insane. <laughs> uh, I think today I, I did want to talk a lot about Instagram. Um, okay. So what do you think contributes to that growth? Like how, what's, like, what's the strategy behind it? Okay, so... I'm going to reveal my secret. So right. If you would have asked me that like three months ago, I would have probably said a whole different answer or like a year ago, a whole different answer. So right now, Instagram, they just came out with like an update. So they're changing all sorts of things. Their algorithm is like constantly changing and it's, it's getting harder and harder for content creators in general to grow, to be seen organically um, to, yeah, to be seen by people who, you know, would, would pick up their content and be like, oh, okay, this is valuable to me. I want to follow them. So their latest thing is that it's just, it's, it's hard, it's hard to grow. It's hard to be seen. So you have to get creative these days on, on collaborations is like the main thing. It's not, so I used to like pay money to be like promoted on a girl's page or a meme page or anything. If you've seen like girls on, on random meme pages that you follow and it's like, oh, her at is this, she paid, she paid to be there. She paid for that slot, you know, it's like a commercial. So right now, yeah, collaborations and, but like paying money, it's, it's, it's churned out nowadays. Content is churned out so quickly. So even if I pay a thousand dollars to be posted on this meme page or this girl's page, I mean, not as many people are going to see it these days. So the newest thing that people are doing, that girls are doing, other pages are doing is, I don't know if you've seen it, but girls are going live with each other. Have you seen this? I have. Yeah. You know about this? I have seen it. So it's, it's a way for girls to grow and be seen. So like if I were to go live with like my sister, for example, Lacey K. Summers, we have a similar following because she does modeling, she does acting, she does performing, whatever. So, so do I. So if we go live with each other, my followers see, oh, Stephanie went live. Oh, she's going live with someone else. Let's go see. And then they go and say they're not following my sister. They go, oh, Lacey K. Summers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go. Oh, I can see her page. Oh, okay. I'm going to go follow her. It's that easy now. And if we're live for an hour, it's new people coming in, leaving, coming in, leaving. So her followers can see, my followers can see. So that's the new way to grow. So in January, this started and girls are just, are growing like crazy now when it would have been so hard in the past. So that's the secret right now is collaborating and getting creative and finding those little kind of, I don't want to say loopholes in Instagram, but yeah, seeing those things of like, oh, this is now a way 
to collaborate with people. Okay, done. And now I just grew from all their followers organically because it's live people who are watching, you know, and, and they're active in the system. So yeah, that makes sense. My, that's my secret right now. <laughs> that's the big one. Mm -hmm. Um, so that seems like not too easy, obviously, but like, from what I've seen from like different lives and stuff, it's like, there's usually only like 200, 300 people watching uh -huh. at like a time. So do you find because they, they're checking in, uh, logging out, things like that, that like 15,000 from that seems like, like a crazy amount of number based on like 200 at a time. Right, right. So if you, so, so say I were to host a live, there's one host, if you see like, usually it's four girls. Um, for these collaborations. So like if I were to be like, hey, I'm hosting to all my friends. We have a little group chat. I'm like, hey, does anybody want to join? Let's let's see how we do. Um, I host, I can add them or kick them off or whatever. If I'm like, oh, this girl's got more followers than you. Okay, bye <laughs> girl. Or your screen's not on. You're not really here right now. Or your, your, yeah, your camera's off or something. So you're not going to help the live as much. You're not interacting and engaging with the people. So you're not as helpful right now. So if I were to bring more people on and then say we're live for an hour together, um, by the end of it, I get my Instagram stats and it'll say 20,000 people joined this live stream. The Jeez. most you had, it'll say peak concurrent views is like 200 or sometimes 600 or a thousand people at one time. Um, but throughout the whole hour, you know, 15,000 or 10,000 or more or whatever, um, they were there at some point, even if it's just to click on like, what are they doing? Oh, okay. Bye. So an hour and all those people. And then you do that and you do three lives a day. So three different hours. Of so three day. a day. Okay. I try, I, I try to do at least, at least three hours. Yeah. A day. I always see you hopping on live. I'm like, geez, it's always, it's, all, it's always. And I feel so bad because when I'm there, I can see when my followers, like I've seen, I think you and like a couple of my other friends, it's like Brady's here. And I'm like, oh, I'm being so boring right now. Or I'm literally <laughs> just sitting here because the rules are you have to turn your microphone off because if four girls have their microphone on at the same time, like this girl's got dogs, I've got insane cats running around and this girl's cooking. This girl's like out at a restaurant. So we have to turn our microphone off. We have to just like be very neutral. We can't like we can talk a little bit sometimes, but some of the girls are like, no, like, I don't, I don't want to be sitting there like at a restaurant or something or, or in my living room. And then like, have you like talking on the phone, like very loudly and I can't turn it down. So, so the rules are we have to turn our microphone off. So everybody will get on and like my friends will be like, Hey, what's up Steph? And I'm like, hi, I can't, I can't talk. I'm so sorry. I'm so boring right now, but that's just, it's a small price to pay to be kind of like annoying like that in some people's feeds, but then some people, you know, they, they, I mean, I don't, I don't mind it. Like I've never been like, Oh, she's live again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Um, is there, like you said, you're being boring. What's the like exciting version of live? Cause like I, when, whenever I've logged into anybody, anybody's, it's just like, Oh, we're just hanging out, you know, yeah. like, yeah. So it, it's, is it more just about the consistency of actually doing it as opposed to like what you're doing on it? Because I can't really think of a scenario where I'm like, I have to watch that for an hour. Right. <laughs> like, right. you know? like right. are we are we skydiving or like what's going on? <laughs> right. right. For me, too. I'm I've always been that way. I'm like, why? Why? I, could, I can't I can't sit there and like I have a hard time with YouTube videos sometimes of like, so why am I going to sit here and watch this person's morning routine when I could be like doing something else or like learning something or, you know, doing something else. So I don't really understand it, but people it's, I don't know. It's sometimes it's, sometimes it's just the engagement. I try to always like, if I can, like I said, if I'm just chilling in my living room or something, I have two phones. So I'll set one up and everybody can see me and then I'll use my other one and I'll be like, all right, I'm talking in the chat right now. Like, what are you guys doing today? This is what I'm doing. And so it's just that like personal interaction because man, life gets busy. So it's, I can't, I, I've never been able to like answer my DMS. I try to answer as many comments as I can to be interactive with people. But I think that's, so if you would have asked me a year ago, like what's really, how, how do you grow on Instagram? How do you really like have a social presence? My answer then would have been create really good content, like unique content, <laughs> 
and just like work really hard and really fast and just, you know, like put stuff out there that means something to you, but you also think your audience would, would gain from find whatever is lacking and then fill that, fill that need for people. And it's not like that anymore. It's, it's really not like everybody's making content. Everybody's doing Instagram and everybody has a workout plan that they can sell on their website and everybody has an app and all this. So now I think the main thing is just like, okay, interaction. So, okay. Yeah. This person, you like their fitness content and whatever, but they don't have the time to talk to you. So when they do and they're live and they're there in person on a live stream and they're sitting there talking to you one-on-one, um, I think it's, that to me is what makes some of the lives like not boring and people are like oh you're actually here holy shit I'm talking to Stephanie Summers right now and she's actually sitting there answering my questions so I think in my in my mind that's that's what it is that's funny I don't I don't think anyone would have that reaction talking to me <laughs> like I feel like they'd be like oh yeah it's, it's Brady again you never he's know. on here <laughs> you never know <laughs> yeah um yeah, so with, um, I know like it, it used to be like Instagram was like a photo platform. Yeah. Then it moved to like video and now it's like reels. Like that's like the big thing. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously it's because they're copying TikTok. Right. But it, do you have a real strategy or is that um, something you haven't looked into? Or do you like, I know you're at a million now, yeah. but do you think like if, if you put out reels and your live strategy, maybe it could blow to like 5 million, 10? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I think there's definitely something to reels. I, I follow a couple of people funnily enough on TikTok, um, just because I don't think reels have picked up as much as like TikToks, you know, it's not as, in, to me, it's not as user friendly. I was trying to make some the other day and I was like, there's always like a lag and it's just very, uh, I haven't figured it out yet. But I was watching somebody on TikTok who was saying, um, if on any social media site, if you find what the new updates are and you use them, like if you're the first person to use them, Instagram will reward you because, because like when reels now it's settled down a little bit, but reels were at first, it was like growth, 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 because you're in some sort of feed like TikTok where there's the for you page and just random content pops up. I don't, I mean, I think it's still that, but I think it's less. So I don't really know, but if you're using that and then, yeah, if you're one of the first pioneers, I guess, to do that, then Instagram's like, okay, this person is opening their app. They're, they're going to a reel and then they're posting it. So then it's notifying all their people. So now a hundred people are opening their app because they're getting a notification that the reel, okay, so the reels are working. So, okay, we're going to push people towards that. I don't know if that's true, but I, I, can't imagine that it wouldn't be true to use you know the newest features and all that stuff now instagram is also doing badges have you heard of this mm -mm. so tiktok jumped on this pretty pretty quickly after you know popularity where you can essentially like tip tip people in the lives like just no just, way just for being there yep so wow. instagram is now doing this because for TikTok, I don't remember what it was called, but it's like people could, I would, I was live. I've only done a couple lives on TikTok because it's just not as familiar to me as like Instagram lives. But I remember I was like on TikTok and it was like, this person sent you 61 flowers. And I'm like, oh, cool. You sent me like emoji flowers, 61 of them. That's weird. Okay. And then afterwards getting off the live, it's like this person donated this much. So 61 flowers translates to three dollars or something whatever it is so i was like wait what the hell somebody gave me money on a live mm -hmm. i was trying to figure that out and yeah sure enough i mean that's i guess that's been a thing on tiktok i haven't delved too far into that but now instagram of course compete competing with tiktok and trying to not lose its audience um they're offering badges so now people who watch my live so say i have 200 people like the other day was my birthday and 200 people on my live and, I'm, and they're, they know it's my birthday. So they're like, oh, what are you doing today? I'm like, oh, I might go out and get drinks or something. And then somebody's like, here, I'm going to buy a badge. Go, go buy yourself a drink. So they like donated essentially or tipped or whatever, like $5. And then it shows up in, in their feed if they comment throughout the rest of the live. They have the badges next to their, their 
name. So it shows like, you know, to everybody else, like, oh, they're, they're a fan. <laughs> they're, a they're, they're an MVP. They're a big tipper. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then I can see that. And then of course it's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. That's so cool. You got the badge by your name. You donated to me. And then of course, Instagram takes a little cut and then, of course. I guess, but but yeah, so there, there's all sorts of ways now. It's crazy. It's That's lot awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, like my current thing is like, I mean, how, I, do you want to briefly explain how we met? It's a weird story, but do you want to explain how we met? I want to hear your me? version. I want to hear your version of it. Um, so I was basically just doing my job. I was cleaning carpets and I showed up at this house um, uh, and it was for Chad. Chad, that's that's your brother, right? Yeah, my brother. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I was just there to clean a couch, basically. And uh, you were, I don't remember what you were doing, but you're in the house and we just got to talking. Yeah. And then uh, we were like, oh, you're an actor. I was like, do you want any coffee? You're like, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. I don't know if I can say this part, but I was also like, you don't have to wear your mask. And you're like, I think I'm supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, yeah we uh just got to talking about acting and like i think we talked about your clown um <laughs> clown training <laughs> yeah yeah i remember that that was pretty funny yeah um and yeah we've just been following it, each other ever since yeah what's your version yeah it was that i think it was uh i i'm like uh, i sleep in so late every single day i stay up so late um, and then I just remember, I don't know where my sister and my brother were, but they were like, Hey, we're, we're leaving. So somebody's coming to clean, clean the carpet and the couch and all that. Cause we got two dogs they are disgusting. So, and they're definitely allowed on the couches cause they're spoiled. So they're like, somebody's going to come clean the couches. Can you just like let him in? He's going to do his thing. He's been here before. And that's that. And I was like, okay, cool. And then, so I'm like, Hey, come on in. What's up? Nice to meet you. I'm making coffee. You want some? You're like, yeah, for sure. And then I, yeah, I don't really know how, I think I was just like chilling downstairs and I was like, I don't know, do I leave him? Is that weird for him to be like, okay, I'm just alone in this house now cleaning this couch. And then like, I just disappeared. So then I was like, all right, I guess I'll just like hang, hang out downstairs, just woke up, just like whatever, to wipe and sleep from my eyes. And then somehow we just like, we're talking in between and then we're like, oh, you're an actor. I'm an actor. Oh, I went to college here. Oh, you have a girlfriend and she does, she's still cooking, right? She's still cooking. Yeah. Yeah. So we're talking about that. And I was like, oh, that's freaking cool. And then, I, yeah, I don't know. You were I remember you told me about Teespring. You told me about Teespring. And then I was like, kept that in the back of my mind, just made some t-shirts. So You anyway. did? Yep. That's yep. awesome. Yeah. Yep. I ended up only selling a couple, but, you know, it was a fun little venture to try. Yeah. There's no sure. nothing wrong with that. So. For sure. Yeah. But, yeah, that's that's my main thing right now is, like, trying to figure out how I can go from – carpet cleaning to like something online yeah. and like with dudes i don't know if we have the same marketability that you know females have right. on the internet so i'm I'm still i'm trying to figure out like well, what value do i have that i could contribute onto the internet that hasn't been like oversaturated by like mm -hmm. millions of other people yeah you know that's everybody's true. That's true. And I tell myself that all the time, but then at the same time, it's like, I don't know. Oh, that's what we were talking about. We were talking about that and how we, I think we were just saying like how we both felt like, yeah, I have this thing. I want to do this thing. Um, I've done collaborations with Stevie Emerson. And I remember you were like, Oh, yes. Stevie, that's freaking cool. And you're like, I want to do like comedy skits and stuff like that. But, 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 and I was like, you know what? I feel the butt too. Like the, okay, yeah, I want to do this, but uh, we, I was like, we just got to do it. We just got to do it. And I was like, you gotta, you gotta get home. You gotta tell your girlfriend, she's got to make those, those cooking videos. And you got to set a goal for yourself. Like once a week, I'm going to do this too. And we're going to write skits and we're going to do this. And that was actually, that was a good, that was a good talk. It's good talk. We both <laughs> yeah. got pretty pumped up on that. Yeah, that's what <laughs> it was. So I think it's easier said than done, but I go through spurts of, of my creativity where I'm like, but like, I want to do this, but all these other girls are already doing this. But the more that I sit there and I'd like talk myself out of it, the longer it takes to do it. And if I would have just done it and then just 
you know, never looked back. I don't know. Maybe, maybe my content, maybe I would be at like 3 million by now. So, I mean, a million is a lot. Like, I mean, let's not take away from a million. Like, that's million an insane amount. Million is a lot. But, you know, creating content and just putting it out there and not worrying about, but all these other people are already doing it, not worrying about that. Because they're not worrying and they're just putting it out there and then they're growing and growing and growing. And yeah, we can't just sit by and just watch them and let them do it. We got we to gotta dive into that saturated market, right? So true. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard i know but like not but 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 yeah but um <laughs> yeah. like i i have two shoots set up in may already and I, I actually asked you to do one of them but then it like you know it didn't work out but um i've already had one person flake on one so i'm wow. like okay gotta gotta replace that person then the next one it's like it's just like I want to put stuff out that's not just me filming on my iPhone. Right, right. <laughs> and like, I could do that. And I probably will also do that because yeah. it's like I get an idea and I could just shoot it really quick. But like the stuff that I want to shoot is like, these are like cool projects. I don't know if you read the the one that I sent you, but it's like, like that's like a full production. Like you need, I mean, I could do it with three or four people. Yeah. But like if people are just constantly flaking out on the dates that I set, right it's like i i don't know how to figure out? that out if she flaked i'm she in she didn't flake she oh. didn't flake right. no not yet right. um we did have to push back but that was because the other one was already so close to it it's like it was we we're gonna shoot one and then the next day we we're gonna shoot another one oh, yeah. um but yeah no the the first one the guy's like oh i just booked a like like i'm working with like industry professionals so like they actually work in the industry so yeah. uh he was like i'm i'm booked from this day to this day and hopefully it doesn't fall on that day that we're, sh we're supposed to shoot but i don't know i'm trying to i'm trying to figure out how to get around this stuff it's a thing i don't know if that's an la thing if that is like just the way the world is right now i don't know if it's always been that way when i went i went to college in oregon i went to an acting college out there and it was like, if somebody said like, okay, we're going to do that. Like we would do it. We would do it. Even if we we're like, oh my God, I have all these other classes. And then this rehearsal for this like main stage production, but then I'm going to go do this like fringe thing just for fun. like, we would still do it. We would make it work. Yeah. And I moved to LA and everybody was like, now I'm in Vegas. I go back to LA for work and stuff, but I'm trying to figure out like, am I going to move back there? I don't know. It's just a weird, it's a weird climate right now. But that was the one thing that I noticed. Like the first thing was that there's flakes, there's flakes in creative endeavors, even like, just like, Hey, I, I remember I was like, I moved to town. I was like, I don't really know anybody. I, I don't know anybody. So I want to like make some friends. How do I make friends? I remember I walked into a Nike's <laughs> store. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. What was it? Uh, what's that? Melrose, not Melrose. I don't know. Anyways, some, so the mall out there. And I walked into a Nike store and I saw this girl and she just had like really pretty braids and she just looked, she just looked fucking cool. Like she looked like she was like a Nike ad, but then she like worked there. So I went up and I like asked her a question and she answered it. And I don't know how we got to talking, but I was just like, Hey, this is really weird. I'm not like hitting on you, but like, can we hang out sometimes? <laughs> she was like, <laughs> like as friends. And I was like, yeah, like, I don't really know anybody here. And you just like seem really cool. And whatever we were talking about, just, and she's like, for sure. Yeah. So then she like gave me her number and then we were talking on Instagram and stuff. And then same thing. I was like, okay, let's hang out. Let's like go meet up for coffee and just like hang out and just talk. We were talking about like, yeah, let's, let's just film some, some scenes. Let's just rehearse scenes for no reason together. Let's do a little mini acting class with just me and you. And then I was like, cool. Yeah. Like let's go out to coffee and then we can bring some scripts. Like I'll bring some, you, you bring some, just print them out. And she didn't show up. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> she didn't sh like <laughs> no show. I just got stood up. And then she like texted me the next day and I was like, Hey, like I like met up. Did you forget? Do you think it was a different day? And she's like, Oh, I just got really busy. I'm like, you could have just said like, you weren't coming. And I was like, okay, so should we hang out another time? Same thing. So, but, 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 but the next time I was like, Hey, like, are you going to still be there today? And she's like, Oh, I can't, I picked up a shift or something. And I'm like, what is that? So then I learned one of my friends from college who ended up moving out to LA, she's like, I noticed that when you just say like, hey, let's hang out in LA, people won't do it because it's not benefiting them at all in any way. 
So if you say like, hey, let's go to this workout class together, they feel like, oh, I'm getting something out of it. Okay, I'll go. So it's not really like hmm. the friendship. It's not the friendship that's important. It's like, oh, I'm going to go and I'm going to get a good workout in. Okay, that's cool. And then the other step is cool because it just comes along with it. So so I don't know what that is when, when a better opportunity comes along. Or it's like, nah, I don't want to do it. And then people flake. I don't, I don't know. I hate that. I hate it so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it might be how I was raised or something, but like, I don't know. Like, I just, I just don't like that feeling of like, we always have to be doing something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, can't we just like chill? It's like, right. we will do something. Like, I'm not saying like, I'm never going to want to like work with you on something, but like, I mean, maybe we could just hang out sometime. Yeah. Yeah. It's very strange. It's a weird city to do that in. It's you really got to find like, a, and I don't even mind if I have to like, got, like disguise it in like a production thing. But it's like, if we do set the production thing, it's like, don't you want to work? Like, right. don't you want to make something like didn't right. you come out to LA to be like an actor, a cinematographer, a director? Right. Like, what is wrong with you? Right, right. Like, I've got like, really nice equipment, like, I've already shot stuff that doesn't look half bad, like the shit looks good. And it's like, like, I have a proven track record of like, I can make something that doesn't look like shit. So it's like, why, why wouldn't we want to collaborate to actually make something? It just, right. it does not make any sense. I don't know. I don't know, but I hate it. Me too. Is Vegas the same like that or people just are down I to chill? don't talk to anybody. I don't talk to anybody. Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, I've always just been like a homebody. Um, but when I moved out here, so I moved out here during COVID and it was just like, it was just, you know, where I was like right off of Melrose that was just like not, it was just not a safe area. My house was really fucking beautiful, nice gated and everything so it's just like okay yeah i didn't know if i was supposed to say that in the story i was like and then i went to and then i was like hmm oh no i shouldn't say where it is but yeah i mean i don't live there anymore so yeah okay. but yeah i lived in a beautiful house off of melrose but it was like you know like two to three houses like in from like off of melrose whatever so there was still there was a lot of crime like people would rob the stores like on melrose or there was like shootings there's a, been a ton of like shootings and just like horrible shit since i moved too and then people would run like into my neighborhood and so it was just like kind of sketch so when our lease was like coming up to an end we we're like okay let's let's get out of here we had me and my sister shared an apartment out here in vegas um just because we would come out here for photo shoots and different different work collabs and there's a lot of Instagram girls who live out here already. So we had an apartment out here and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go to Vegas for a little bit. And then my sister, she has like an amazing um, monopoly in in Arizona. She just owns a bunch of houses now. And she, oh, shit. she rents them out as Airbnbs and they're cool. beautiful. They're so beautiful. So she's like, all right, I'm gonna go get some of my Airbnbs uh, off the ground. And then we'll, we'll, we'll go back to LA when COVID's over and I really wasn't like booking anything. And so I was like, all right, I don't think it's a horrible time for me to take some time away. Um, but now that I'm out in Vegas, I, yeah, I kind of came out here and was like, I mean, what do I, do I start over? Do I like pretend like I'm gonna stay here? Do I take acting classes here? Or do I just kind of like, so I kind of decided I'm just gonna delve into my social media accounts. I'm gonna build build my audiences there. Cause that's kind of the way of the world now. And so I haven't really like, I don't, I don't really go out much. I don't really do much. I haven't made, I have, I have a couple friends. Um, my partner's family is here. So I hang out with them. And other than that, I don't really know, but I think I, I kind of feel like the further you go from LA, like the more likely you are to have like real relationships and real, mm -hmm. you know, friendships and connections and stuff in that way. Because I feel like the few people that I have interacted with out here, it's like, okay, if we set a plan, they show up. <laughs> and I don't know if that's like an individual thing or uh, yeah, if it's just, okay, the, the people in LA, they're just career, career, career. If this doesn't benefit me, no, fuck everybody else. I don't care. I'll flake, I'll, I'll cancel, I'll do whatever. So Vegas is cool. I don't know if I want to stay out here. I don't know if I want to stay out here. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to go back to LA, maybe to New York, try a brand new city. Mm. Try a brand new city. See how that breaks my dreams. No, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> that's funny yeah. how has your acting been like is it is it taken off or is it like how how is the social media effect the acting uh all so, that so i haven't i haven't done a ton of acting recently i have my like foundation is in theater so and you I, can sing and i can sing yeah, yeah. I sing, I dance a little bit if I have to. It's not my favorite, it's not my strongest suit. But yeah, I've I've done a lot of musical theater. Um, so I've I've like traveled around a lot for different theatrical projects and stuff like that. So that was really awesome. And then I pretty much traveled for like a year and a half straight just doing different theater because when you do like a theater contract, it's usually you rehearse for three weeks and then you put it up for like three to four months as performances and then it closes and then that's that's it it's over so then constantly having to find theaters to jump around to so i was pretty successful in that going all around went up to washington and oregon and different how do you places. get into that because i'm curious about that because like I, I wouldn't mind doing some some theater work but it's like yeah yeah i mean it'd be fun to like do that not instead of class but like to have because that's just more consistent practice of like under the pressure yeah it's it's more like i feel like th doing theater is is the acting classes but but you actually get to i mean you're still getting notes and you're still you know getting critiques and all that to to keep your mind sharp and oh okay i didn't think of that before but but i just think that i mean theater is just that's just fucking awesome but it it, it it's a have you done like live theater at all before I've done like two plays, but that okay. was like a long time ago. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's actually quite a bit. I wasn't sure what I was going to get into when I moved to LA. Um, but that was, I moved to LA cause I was like, I want to, I want to base somewhere cause I was traveling too much. And I was like, okay, either LA or New York, that's where I got to go. I don't know. I haven't heard about like LA theater. You hear LA film, television commercials. So, I mean, there's, there was quite a bit and I, I booked a, booked a play, um, in, uh, North Hollywood in the arts district. And of course we were going to open the weekend after COVID like shut everything down. Oh my God. So, um, we might still do that someday. I don't, I don't know if we'll ever get that back <laughs> and running, but the director was always like, no, this is just a pause. This is not canceling. Cause this is like, it's so good. It's such a good show, but there's, there's quite a bit like all those theaters out there in the, in the arts district, they, they have stuff or like fringe, I is it on actors that. access or do you go on there's like, quite a to bit. the theater uh some, sometimes, <laughs> like, sometimes a little bit of both i think i think la yeah it's different different communities different theaters but if you're doing stuff in la it's actors access um yeah it's kind of it's kind of that connection game of like i've gotten a lot of auditions and stuff in the theater world but like especially in LA just because either the playwright knows me or the director knows me and they're just like hey like I'm doing this thing like are you are you available and are you interested here's the script here's the dates here's all the details um so it's kind of yeah it's a little bit you know building the connections and knowing who to talk to who to ask or sometimes it's yeah sometimes it's looking up the theater okay they post on their website here's the auditions, here's the dates, either show up or it's on Zoom. Here's how you reserve a time slot, all this, it'll have all the details. So, so sometimes it's that, and sometimes it's just emailing the artistic director directly, like finding their email and being like, hey, I'm interested, here's my headshot resume. If it's already cast, just keep me on file for future, please. <laughs> and hmm. signing up for their email list or whatever the hell you got to do to, to, yeah, figure it out. So it's different each place, but there's a, there's a lot of theater auditions on Actors Access. I think I saw a couple. It's just, I feel like a theater audition would be a lot more than like a, like self-tape type of thing. I mean, you might still have to just self-tape, but, but yeah. I feel like it's more, it would be more intense than yeah. like a normal like here memorize this real quick a little bit i think it's it's the same i mean if you have those same muscles it's in the same vein you just just maybe a little bit different of a flex i don't know yeah <laughs> but but yeah it's the same you should just do it they're, i mean so they're kind of way more far and few between like if you go on actor, actors access it'll be like the whole page you know and it's like commercial short student film whatever feature sag after whatever all the different projects and then it'll, out of all these it's like two it's like theater theater mm -hmm. or like musical or something so there's there's definitely a couple but 
Yeah. I'm wondering if that's just because of COVID still. Like people are a little scared to like open all the way up because you still got the flight restrictions and like some of the other restrictions. So I don't know. Maybe they think they're thinking it's just going to shut down again. Yeah. Because there has been talk here and there of like, oh gosh, there's going to be another food shortage. Oh, there's going to be another thing. But I feel like right now everybody's just kind of like settled and like, okay, can I can I proceed with my life yeah. and plans or do I stay here and just like make sure I'm prepared and barricaded behind my rolls of toilet paper or like, what do I do? Uh, yeah. That's how I was feeling for a while too. And then I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to start this podcast see what happens. Yeah. Cause like before COVID, I think we talked about this. I already had like a couple of projects that I was like producing mm-hmm. and then it was just like completely shut it down. And like, I don't know, during that, that time it was like, it wasn't a great time for me. But I was just like, I still have this thing that I want to like do. And mm-hmm. it's like, you're like the government's literally telling me I can't do this thing. Yep. So it's like, I, j- I was just like, you know what, what I can do from home is just start a podcast. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, I don't know, like we were talking about earlier. It's just like, I'm, I'm tired of telling myself no. It's like, yeah. I'm, I'm ready for other people to start telling me no a lot yeah. more. Yeah. Just making those big asks. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's why I asked you too. like that goes back to it. It's like, I was like this girl, like, why would she be interested in doing my podcast? Like she's got a million followers. And then I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll let her tell me no. Yeah. There you <laughs> and then you're like, hell yeah, I want to do your podcast. <laughs> and I was like, all right, let's do it. I would have said yes. To be fair, I would have said yes to the script. It was just a busy week. So that's why I said, okay. I didn't, I got through like reading the second page and then I got your, your DM and you were like, ah, oh, never mind. Some other girl said yes. So I was like, okay, that's fine. That's fine. It wasn't meant to be. So the next one I'm down. I'm always down. Like if I can, if I have the time, like in my schedule. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I was always taught in college to say, well, also to say like, yes, I would love to do that hang on let me see because you know shit happens life comes up or um just yeah like you said some some other one of your other projects somebody's like oh just kidding i booked this thing but you know i'm i'm more like if i commit to something once i finally do i have to make sure i'm sure and available and all that and then once i commit yeah i'm 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 doing it i'm not the best at making plans but i'll always show up to them so it's like, yeah, say, say, say yes, if you can, if you want to, how oh, there was one of my teachers too, was like, every project has to have at least three of five things. And I don't even remember what the list was. <laughs> it was like, it was like, I think it was like the five F's and it was like finances, friends, something, something, something. So it's like either you're making money off the project or it's something that's like fulfilling you creatively that you're like, yes, absolutely. I want to be a part of that or I want that for my reel or I want to build that connection. I'm not necessarily interested in the show, but like I want to work with him in the future. So yeah, I'm just going to say yes. Or, you know, like all these, all these different things. So I'm always trying to be like, okay, like if, if I can do it, yeah. Why would I, why would I say no? I'm not, I'm not too good for that. So absolutely <laughs> So yeah, yeah. In the future, we'll do we'll do a skit. We'll do something. We will. I, I you know, it'd be cool is like, I don't know, something for internet, like something for like, um, like just not necessarily just for social media growth, but like something that's like, guy, you know, guided toward that. Like that would be kind of cool. A guided tour. No, guided toward, guided toward, what the fuck am I saying? I don't know. I don't even know what I mean. No, but more focused toward, (laughs) that's the word I was looking for, um, toward the internet. Um, you worked with this guy. He's one of my huge inspirations, Stevie Emerson. Love him. Um, He's, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how the fuck he cranks out so much content. Like that blows my mind. He is a fucking beast. He is a beast. He works harder than a lot of people that I even know. Um, And I've met some pretty fucking like crazy, crazy content creators in that way. But he, he's just, he's a beast. He's like always like, okay, work, 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 work. Yeah. He's And he runs like a really, really tight ship too. Like he's just, he's got an excellent uh, I don't know, crew, I guess I don't want to call him, but his, just his team behind him. Like it's everybody who's 
there on set with him in his projects, they're all like for the cause, for the cause. Like they're mm. just so on board. They're so like sharp, ready to work. Like he'll just, him and um, Alex just sit there and write, just write shit together alone, whatever. So once it's, once it's there, he's like, Hey, you're involved. You're involved. You're doing this. You're doing this. You're doing, everybody's like very clear on what they're doing. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a professional, it's a professional like set when you're there with him. Um, yeah. Yeah. So then once he, as soon as he leaves, he's like, all right, I'm gonna start editing. I think the first thing that I did with him, I don't know if you saw, I think I sent it to you a while back, but it was the, the threesome scene. <laughs> yeah. With the, uh, oh what, Lord, what was the guy's name? Morgan. 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 Yeah. And he walks in, he's this big yeah. biker too. Yeah. I'm texting Morgan right now. Morgan's going to meet us for a threesome. Okay. I'm down. And then it's big burly biker dude. Um, he's like, yeah, I'm Morgan. Yeah. So that was the first thing that I worked on with him. And I remember I had just like found Stevie, like, right. I don't even remember how I found him, but I had found his page right before that, like a couple weeks before I did the collab with him. So I started following him and I was like, dude, you're fucking hilarious. And then he messaged me and he's like, Hey, are you an actor? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I think so some days. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and so he's like, Hey, you want to do this? You, you ever want to like collab on something? And I was like, uh, with you for fucking sure. Yeah, let's do it. So then he sent it to me. I was like, this is hilarious um so then i yeah so then i was like i don't know what to expect like you never really know with yeah how was guys. shooting with him like how like what level of professionalism was it on set so the first one i'm trying to remember the first one we filmed oh we filmed it all in one day we filmed that one all in one day and of course he has his two versions so he does like a shorter one for instagram and then he does his longer like the, the film version of every project on YouTube. So yeah, it was a pretty long day, but we, he, he picked me up at my house in West Hollywood and then we drove out. Oh gosh, I think it was, it was kind of far. I don't remember where it was, but I think it was towards the water. So I was like, why the hell are we, are you kidnapping me? I don't fucking <laughs> know you. Like, I don't know you. Then I'm just, I just got into a car with you. So then he has a friend who has like a restaurant bar that just let us film there. So it was pretty much like, it was pretty much set up. Like he just, I don't know if he went out there ahead of time and set everything up, but we get there and he has like the camera operator. He had whoever was holding like boom. I think Alex helps a lot with kind of whatever position needs to be filmed. Um, so yeah, there was pretty, pretty small crew of people. And then he had like one other actor guy. I don't know if anybody's noticed this, if anybody's seen this, skit it's pretty funny because so when we're sitting at the table um for the for the first part of it you know i'm on one side he's on the other side there's somebody behind me there's somebody behind him and we filmed all my stuff first and then all all his stuff afterwards and he just had his friend who was being the other actor just go behind me and then like take off his jacket and go behind him and just look like it was a completely other human so i was like that's so cool i would you know i would never like think to do that because it's like they're gonna the audience is gonna know but oh the way shoot the way he had it like mapped out in his brain and he's directing the whole time. So he's got director brain, he's got actor brain. And so like he was, Man, I, was, I want to work with him so bad. Well, maybe, maybe I can, maybe I can make that connection someday. Because I just feel like insecure though. I'm like, would I be good enough to work on one of his short films? Absolutely. 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 Don't tell yourself no. Don't <laughs> okay, tell yourself right. no. Let, let me right. tell you no. I know. <laughs> But it's like yeah. I would be like on a normal set and it's like totally fine. But yeah. like when I see him, yeah. it's like, oh, I felt man, the, I felt the same. I felt <laughs> the same. I felt the same. And I remember I was like, OK, I know this about him. And I've, I watched a bunch of his videos. And so I was like, okay, I already know how he's going to want me to deliver the lines. And I was doing it a certain way. And he's like, actually, no, no, no. Can you do it? And I'm like, oh, OK, I don't know why it's so scary. Yes, I'll do it that way. I can totally do that. I just I was trying to get into your brain. OK, no, but he knows exactly because he knows. I think he has a couple editors, but he usually edits a lot of his stuff. So he he knows like, okay, I want you to do this because then I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna do this. And um, yeah, so it was it was pretty cool. So we did that scene first and then we went back to my house. We filmed at my house at the time. And uh, yeah, we filmed like upstairs the rest of it. And it was, it was quick. And then the next day I was also rehearsing for a play that I was in in North Hollywood. He lived in North Hollywood at the time. He doesn't now, but um, and so I was like right down the street from his house and I texted him and I was like, Hey, that was so fun yesterday. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see it. And he's like, I'm already editing it. Uh, let me know if you want to see it. And I was like, you're already editing. What do you mean? You have a rough cut. And he's like, yeah, come over. So I went over and I was like, 
that's pretty much the final product the next Damn. day it's in, he's insane he's insane but Must get, yeah. he's gotten so fast i'm sure doing yeah. it so much yeah and right now i think he's filming like a feature oh yeah i saw that on his on his yeah. stuff yeah i feel I, like i'm just like such a stalker <laughs> I <need to> stop. <laughs> That's so no funny. it's good it's good he's he's awesome and he would he would appreciate that he's yeah, so right now I just see he, he's working on his feature. I don't know if he's still cranking out shorts and stuff, but for a while I remember he was like, I'm taking a break because I'm doing my feature. He's got and... him coming out like all the time still. It's, yeah. I just don't get how like the work ethic is the thing that blows my mind the most. I mean the the skits are funny, but it's like the amount that he puts out is just like I have yeah. no idea how, how he does it. Because yeah. it was for me, it was Jimmy Tatro for yeah. a while. I don't know if you're yeah. yeah, I think yeah. he's still putting stuff out, but it's not like to the level it used to be because he's actually like making it as a actor mainstream. Yeah. And then um, there's like two other guys I follow and then Stevie Emerson. And th those are the only um, like three people that I follow. Yeah. Yeah. I just, oh man, the fact that he can do all of that, put out the feature. Um, I don't know. Yeah. And I think the last time that I talked to him, he's like, it's just, you know, same, same shit, different day. They like, still like it? always oh he loves it okay he loves it but i That's remember he said, he said something like oh, i'm just kind of waiting for it to pay off or something and i was like well one it already fucking is because he has a very like loyal fan base but i feel like he's one of the few people that he's actually fucking funny <laughs> like yeah he's, he's actually, funny he's actually funny and like his shit's actually there's a couple of people that i follow and i'm like they're funny but this dude's funny or, or like I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that is, but he's just like, and he's genuine. And so actually I went live with him on, on Instagram live a couple weeks ago and he was on. And so I was like, what's up? And he's like, Oh, I'm, I'm trying to request you come live with me. And I was like, Oh shit. Okay. Hang on. So then I was going live with him and then we were talking for a minute and he's like, should I bring someone else on? And I was like, you gotta be really careful because one time me and my sister tried to bring some random person on our Instagram live. And we were just being so, me and my sister are just so weird and silly. And so we were talking about like, oh, like this is a yoga pose that I like to do. And so I was, I was telling our audience like, okay, we're going to bring somebody on live, be ready to show us your yoga pose. And so some guy was like, me, 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 me. And he was being really nice in the chat. So I was like, okay, he seems like a normal person, bring him on. And he's, he's like, hi, thank you so much. And I'm like, okay, you have a yoga pose. And he's like, I sure do. He stands up and his ass is right here. He's wearing a thong. His oh ass God. is right here in the camera and he just starts slapping his ass. <laughs> and we had to like X out oh my really God, fast. Dude. I was like, I'm gonna get oh. reported. I'm gonna get reported. So it was, I never thought that anything like that would happen. So I had that experience in my mind. I was live with Stevie. He's like, let's bring someone on. I was like, be careful. And I tried to tell him that story. And he's like, well, that would never happen to me. And I was like, okay, just, are you sure? I'm traumatized from it. And then he brings someone on and it's just the nicest guy ever. He's wearing a slappers only sweatshirt. And he's like, Hey, what's up, Stevie? Like I met you at life is beautiful. A couple of years ago, you put me on your shoulders and like all of a sudden, <laughs> this really like sentimental like moment. And Stevie's like, Oh, that's so cool, man. Thank you. And the guy was just like, nice. And I was like, wow, <laughs> my followers are not like that. That's funny. <laughs> my followers are perverts. So <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, it could have been worse though with yours it could have been it could have been much worse i'm just saying how so i mean how it, it so? could have been the other side yeah, okay yeah you're right exactly. i mean <laughs> that's what i was expecting and then you surprised me with just just ass but I, I yeah. surprised me for a second i was like what am i looking at oh he's just twerking and, and slapping his ass all right that's funny okay so yeah, <laughs> yeah. um do you have uh representation i actually don't right now i don't and i was set on acquiring representation uh right of course right before covid started and i told you i was in a play i was the lead the play was fucking hilarious just it was just so it's such a good show and then also like a great way for me to like represent my my work, what do I, yeah. what I have to offer all that. So I was like, all right, I'm going to send out emails and letters and all this shit to all these industry professionals, casting directors and, and 
you know, agents and managers and all that, they're going to come see my show. It's three weekends. They're going to come see, and I'm going to, I'm going to take, be able to take my pick from who I want to represent me. Like everybody's going to be knocking down my door with this role. And then I didn't get to do it. And Mm. so then I was like, shit. And then everything stopped and Hollywood was not even operating at all. So then I was like, well, now what do I do? I can't just blind submit. I have nothing to show. I mean, I have a reel and I have, you know, my social media, I guess, um, to to kind of showcase like who I am and what I, what I have to offer, I guess. But I was like, I just, I really want people to see my work. So I put it off, put it off, put it off. Nothing was happening. And then I moved out to Vegas and I'm like, fuck, what do I, what do I do? And now I can't be like, Hey, like I'm looking for representation. I'm not in any shows for you to see. (laughs) And I also live in Vegas. Like I can't do that. So I'm kind of in a place right now. That's why I'm like, okay, invest and do all my time in social media, build that brand all that and then if and when i go back to la i'll be now i'll be able to change my sites to um to looking for representation and all that so i don't right now someday i probably will but yeah it's been a it's been an interesting road (laughs) well that's okay yeah because i feel like if you're you know i mean the reason you get representation is to you know book higher level stuff and hopefully make a living as an actor and if you're already making a living then right i don't know i don't know how, how important oh, you had asked me earlier i have a i have an interesting story it's kind of fucked up so you asked me and then i i go off on the tangents and i'm like no, okay. and I'm, I'm listening to myself and i'm like wait what did he ask me what the fuck am i talking about <laughs> can i make my Same. way back to it whatever so um you had asked me like i think how if if instagram well you didn't ask me this but you said other terms but people ask me all the time, does my Instagram uh, presence and my internet presence help or hinder my acting world? Does it, does it uh, like legitimize me? People always say like, oh, people must see, like casting directors must see you have a million followers. Does that legitimize you? And they see you and they're like, okay, she's, she's somebody, she's something. And like, I still don't really know the answer. I've had very much mixed because LA, they are like, oh, followers, views, eyeballs. Like, yeah, you're popular, you're popular. You're, you're one of the cool kids, so yeah. But then at the same time, they're like, oh wait, but what do you post? You post bikinis, lingerie, lifestyle, sometimes singing and acting, but like you're kind of, it's kind of hard to like place you somewhere. Because- yeah, I was wondering about that. Like, that's one of the things I was wondering is like, now that you've like reached your like big goal yeah like are you considering like not pivoting but like including a little bit more of like these are my talents like this is what i can do yes (laughs) yes and because you don't want to just be a pretty face especially if you are trying to get into more legitimate projects yes because you actually can do the work and it's like if people just see your instagram they might be like oh my god she's just a pretty face but like you know, I know you can sing, I know you can dance and all that other stuff. And like, even in just Stevie's video, I could tell like, whoa, this, this girl can fucking throw down, like she can act. (laughs) So it's like, what's your plan on that? I guess. Yeah. I think that that has been my goal in the back of my mind. And it's a double edged sword because my audience on Instagram follows me for a specific reason. I feel like I do have a good portion of my audience that is like, dude, I mean, you're fucking like, you're hot and you're cool, but you're like nice and you're, you're nice. Yeah. yeah, Like you're just like, people are just like, you're so genuine. And I'm like, I try to be. And I just like, I, I, I want to be, you know, that quote, be the change you wish to see in the world. Like I've always just, that's been my goal is to just be like a nice person, a bright light. I feel like everybody and I feel like a lot of people, like they, they try to gauge people and see like, are you, are you worthy or are you, in need of do you deserve kindness right now okay then i'll be nice to you and then like are you where i just feel like everybody everybody's fucking worthy of love everybody deserves to be heard and seen and so that's why i'm like if i can do that and go out a little bit out of my way or whatever to make someone's day and to reach out and engage with people one-on-one if i can do that i will if i can't if i'm full or whatever if i'm like okay or i'm empty rather can't do it so but my whole thing is like my followers, they do follow me for, you know, specific reasons. So if, and when I do pepper in some other stuff, I'll, that's when I'll notice like unfollow, unfollow, unfollow. Oh no. So they just want to see my ass. Like that's not (laughs) fair. I'm more than that. So I'm like, 
okay, let me build, 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 and then get to the point where I can just do whatever the fuck I want. And then just like, if, you know, the right people will come, the wrong people will leave and unfollow. And it's, it's fine either way. I still have the platform. I'm very, very like lucky and grateful and fortunate to, to have those people. But yes, I would love to pepper in my acting and singing and all that. But then I'm like, it comes with a price of like yeah. losing the followers, losing the views and all that. I did have one time, <laughs> this is, I think I was, I was still in Oregon. I think at the time I had like maybe 400 K and was still doing, you know, the same sort of bikini content. And I think at that time I was, I was a little bit more fitness as well. That's kind of how I started into fitness. And then since it's just like, I've, I've been in the actual industry, like in the heart of the fitness industry. And I'm like, all these people are liars. They're liars. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm still, I mean, I'm still involved in fitness, but I'm not doing as much of the, all that. So anyway, so that, that was my page more at the time was it was fitness and still bikini lingerie, whatever. I was involved in theater in the community. I was involved in the college, but, but also, yeah, like extracurricular outside of college um, shows and all that. I got, I booked Mary Poppins at a theater out there. I was Mary Poppins. I was so excited. I had been in the show once before, but not as Mary. So I, I like was in the ensemble. And I remember like, I would be in the wings and I was like, I'm going to watch her. I'm going to watch everything she does when she's on stage. I'm going to learn so that if, if, and when I ever get the opportunity to play Mary Poppins, like I'm going to have her choices in mind of like, okay, that worked for her. I can do that. People like that. The audience laughed at that. I can do that. And et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, I booked Mary Poppins. I was like, this is going to be the role of my fucking lifetime. I'm so stoked. Booked it, was rehearsing for a couple weeks, uh, two weeks out from opening the show and I had a phone call from a random organ number. I usually don't answer numbers. I don't know. I answered it and it was a sweet old lady. And she's like, hi, is this Stephanie? I, for a while I was going by, you asked Stephanie Potter. That's what I was going by in Oregon because I wanted to keep my online as separate as I could because of stalkers and all that. So Stephanie Potter in the theater world. So is this Stephanie Potter? Yeah, what's up? Who's this? Hi, I am on the board of directors. I'm like the lead honcho at the theater that you're working out from uh, for Mary Poppins. Um, I'm just giving you a courtesy call because we've been receiving uh, emails from a quote unquote concerned community member that thinks that you should not be involved in our production. And I'm like, what, 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 what do you, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean? And at the time I had only told a handful of people like that I was even in the show. Like a lot of people didn't even know just cause I was like, I didn't really want my classmates to know and find out until I was like, I'm doing this thing and mm. I'm already like, I'm fucking ready. And so come see it or don't, I don't give a shit. But I was like keeping it quiet. So I only told a handful of people and it wasn't in the papers yet or anything like that. So she's like a concerned community member uh, said that you should not be involved in the show since it's a family operated theater and it's a children's show. She said that we should not have a porn star working in our theater. And oh I was like, God. I was like, so then why are you calling me? I'm not a fucking porn star. <laughs> and she was like, honey, I don't know like who you are and what you do. I saw a couple of your pictures on your Instagram. She's like, as far as I'm concerned, you are our family and fuck this lady. She said that in her emails, she's, she wants to re remain anonymous, but she said that she's donated so much money and we're not going to get funds if we keep you in the show and all this, because you are just a liability and a hazard having someone like you and whatever. And I was like, what the hell? And then she was like, you're, I don't care. She's like, that lady's a bitch. We don't need her money. And so you are talented. She's like, I haven't seen you yet, but the director, I've had this conversation with him. I was like, everybody knows it. Everybody's like, everybody knows that fucking someone's against me trying to get me fired for my online presence. That's not even bad. I don't like, it's not porn. What the hell? So yeah. So she's like, fuck this lady. Like you're talented. You can act, you can sing. He said that like, there's, there's absolutely no way he would sooner cancel the entire show than fire you and find someone else and all this. So I was like, well, thankfully, <laughs> thank God that happened, but also, wow. So I'm, I really, I've, I've pissed some people off, I guess. Isn't that what they want, though? Like, I don't think people understand. Like, get the people talking. Right? You know, right. like, if anything, it would boost the numbers at the theater. Right? Like, do they, don't they want butts and seats, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like that's ultimately probably part of what played into it, too. Like, okay, yeah, if we make it on the news or whatever, then... Yeah. Cool. Like, even if you yeah. fail, it's like, 
uh, who was she to try? Right. You know? right, right. <laughs> Instead of like, I don't know, trying to get you kicked out. That's just so silly. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Especially if they want eyeballs. Right. But that's good. I'm glad it had a had a happy ending because yeah. I was expecting it to be like, nah, I got fired. Yes. No, thank, thank goodness. I, yeah, I had a good, I was working with a good team of people. They believed in me and they saw that I, you know, my heart was there and so I was just, that was helpful. So there's, there's that side of the spectrum. And then just recently I had someone reach out and be like, actually LA Fringe Festival or Hollywood Fringe or whatever it's called, but um, this playwright and he's like hey I wrote the show like can you come do it and I was like can you pay me and he's like no and I was like oh, well then why and then he's like but I maybe I can pay you a little bit if you post it on your social media and I was like huh, no <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it to me yeah that'd be that'd be a hard sell yeah for your audience <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um is there anything else you want to talk about was there anything that you were like, oh, I need to mention that thing? We talked about a lot of stuff. I feel like a lot of good stuff. I feel like if it just, if anything, I want to bring it home with just like, don't tell yourself no. Like to everybody out there, don't don't tell yourself no. Let other people tell you no. But what's what's that one quote? You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take or whatever. So I think that was it. Yeah. I think you nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> and also be the change you wish to see in the world just be a good person karma will come back and so just have good intentions that's it that's i think you're setting a very good example because i think a lot of girls out there think that because they're pretty they have to be bitchy or i don't know i don't know if it's like mentally like they think that they actually do but mm -hmm. it, those two things seem to go together yeah and it's like i feel like you're a good example of like somebody who you can be very pretty, but you can also be very nice. Yeah. Yeah, they can they can coexist. It was actually funny. Last week, I had somebody who, in one of my Instagram lives, I was talking to people. Actually, I think it was on my birthday. And somebody was like, wow, you hit 1 million followers and you're still so nice. Yeah. And I was like, it's not like, a, I don't think it's just a, like a switch that flips. I think it's just like, I'm just a good person. And maybe those people, they just like, no matter how many followers they have, they're just that's just who they are yeah so i feel like the things can coexist my cat wants to say hello no you don't okay so my they cat's can in here somewhere <laughs> but he's hiding but it was also on. it was also funny oh okay there we go so okay all right <laughs> i was like yeah i called my dad too and i was like dad i hit one million followers on instagram he's like cool so what are you doing today and i was like oh i'm just like going to pick up my dry cleaning gotta go to my peel box and He's like, I thought that like, shouldn't people be doing that for you? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> don't, don't I like unlock a level with 1 million followers? Like I don't have like a butler or something somewhere. I'm doing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, plug your Instagram and um, I'm trying to get people to contribute to the show. Okay. Yeah. That's the main thing. So yeah. There's a link in my show notes okay. that all they have to do is click on it and pick if they want to uh, contribute $10, $5, or $1. Great. If you could just say, tell them to do it. Cause I feel like because you're, you know, you have a million followers, you're obviously influential. Right. I, so, I would hope so. <laughs> so if you could just tell them to do it, I mean, maybe they, maybe they would For do sure. it. We'll see. We'll see if there's any generous people out there, they will. And if you're watching this and you don't contribute, you're not generous. I'm just kidding. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I always tell people like it, it's kind of, you know, always awkward to like do that plug, but it really, really helps the littlest bit, even a dollar. It helps us content creators and creatives in general, just to be able to like do what we want to do. And the world would be a better place if we all just got to do what we wanted to do and we had support and people. So even, even the littlest bit always helps. So I will be sure to ask my generous followers. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what was I going to say? Dang it. I hate when that happens. My train of thought. Uh, anyway, it must not have been important. No. Um, so yeah. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. If you could, uh, follow Stephanie at Stephanie Summers. Stephanie Summers, S-T-E-F-A-N-I-S-O-M-E-R-S. It's a weird one, but that's my name. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess it is. 
It should be Summers, S-U-M-M-E-R. Yeah, it's people, S-O-M-E-R-S. Yes, people always say, well, they spell my first name wrong because it's Stephanie with an F and no E at the end and then Summers like the season, but spelled like Suzanne, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everybody for listening. Uh, we got some good stuff coming up. And if you want to say bye, go ahead. Bye, you guys. Thank you so much for watching slash listening. Love y'all.